What's up? What's up, people? What's up? This is your boy, K Solo. Listen, I know, I know I haven't came out here with a story in a long time, in a couple of days. Well, it's not a long time like that. In a couple of days. Like, I think it's going to be today's going to be the fifth day. Uh, so, yeah, listen, uh, I want to come up with this story um, that happened to me in the island. This is going to be a, another Rikers Island story, no question about that. Uh, you know, you know, you already know, and um, like I said, all these stories that I that I tell you guys is nine but a hundred percent true, and this is another one that I'm about to tell y'all that happened to me, and I'm pretty sure it has it has happened to many other inmates. You understand what I'm saying? Those inmates that have respect and those inmates that have, you see when you in a house when you run a house. And I'm talking about running a house that you could be the oldest guy there in that house. So that also works. Also, if you run the house fair, and I'm talking about running the house fair, like all that stuff about black phones and Puerto Rican, I mean, black and Spanish phones, that's dead. That's dead. If, if I got a house and... And I come into the house and, and I see that they have a black phone and a Puerto Rican phone. I, I'm not feeling that. I am not feeling that. You feel me? So that's that's right there. It starts a little, you know, racist thing, you know? So what I usually do, man, is, and 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 usually, let's say when you're in the house, you come in, okay, they already got that rule. They already got that rule. So you cannot stop, you know, coming there and just, you know, break, you know, breaking the rule. No, you can't do that. You wait till it's your turn. You feel me? You wait till it's your turn when your, when your word matters in the house. And that's something that you got to do once you get into the house. Whatever house you in, you got to make sure you got to, you got to have your presence in the house and you got to have respect in the house because that's how people, you know, don't, don't, don't have nobody fucking with them because they have to, that, that proper respect. And that proper respect is you can't not be no fucking bully in the island. You cannot. You understand what I'm saying? You're a fucking bully in the island. Trust me. You're going to get called out one day and they're going to, they're going to test you. They're going to test you. So my suggestion is never be a bully. Never be a fucking bully. Now, this story starts in Rikers Island, 1988. Yes, indeed. I was, God, I was, I was so young. I was so young and, and so full of energy. Anyway, let's see, when you in, in, in Rikers and you got a house, like I said, you and the CEO have an understanding, you see. The CEO that I had, his name was Mendleton. Mendleton was one of those CEOs that he was police, but he was also grimy. And I'm talking about grimy in a way that Mendleton used to hit me off. I'm talking about he used to hit me off with trees. He used to bring me Headphones, I'm talking about trees. I'm talking about at least a 20, sometimes 25 hours in week. And, and back, and we're talking about one, two, three, four, five nickels, five to four nickels a week of weed. That's not bad for a couple of months in that row. I mean, I was in his house like for about I say three and a half months, almost four months in that house. And let me tell you, it was understanding with him because this is how we used to do things, okay? And a lot of inmates that tell you they don't do things like that, they fucking lying. All right? They fucking lying. When uh, when any inmate or any, any family, I'm talking about family, you know what I'm talking about, they gang-related or whatever, whoever got that house at that time, the CO always favors the most and the most powerful people. So the CO always throws some, certain things to you. You understand what I'm saying? The certain things that he gives you. Like right now, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of CEOs in Rikers Island that be giving tobacco to the inmates. 
to calm these enemies down. Sometimes it's good to give them a cigarette or two. Or sometimes it's good to bring two pouches a week to the house. And CEOs be doing that. You understand what I'm saying? All CEOs, some CEOs just want to sell them and get paid. I mean, a pouch of tobacco in Rikers Island right now, I'm pretty sure that's like $40. That's like $40 fucking dollars or make believe, I don't know, maybe 50 A pouch that it costs, what, $4 in the streets? Maybe 5 A pack of tobacco? I don't, you know, I, I forgot. But listen to this. In Rikers, you buy and for a whole pouch, you're gonna pay forty to fifty dollars a pouch, and people be giving that up. Now, let me tell you guys. When I was in the house of Minton, that house after a while, dudes started leaving. Dudes that was there first to me. You understand what I'm saying? It didn't take long for me to plant my flag in that house. It did not take too long. And once I planted, the first thing Milton did that when Milton found out that I, you know, he, you know, you could see things, you could, you could tell, you know, the the seal be looking around. They know who's who's what, the way who starts serving the food, who takes over, and who starts giving orders. Yo, you go over here. Yo, you serve the jelly. You serve the 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 cornflake. You serve the milk, and you just stay there watching. You know, saying making sure everything is good. Everybody get their part, and if and whoever's sleeping. And if, if he was a good friend of yours or he was somebody that didn't bother nobody and gave respect, you you hold their shit. You know what I'm saying? You take their little milk and, and cornflake, whatever, and you have somebody take it to their cell, like, yo, here, drop this off to, the, to number 22 cell. So anyway, the house was rocking. I had the house locked down. But I was with my man, L Swell. And there was something about L Swell, man, that you used to make me act stupid. I'm serious. I was young, and with this, <laughs> and with this dude, I used to, yo, I used to, I'm telling you, I'm telling you the things that me and him did in that house, it was fucked up. Uh, yo, one of his ghetto, we used to call it the, the bloody roster. This dude used to take a mop. I'm talking about just the mop, just the mop, not the steak, not like that, just the mop, the head. And he just put it top of his head, and he just make it look like he had, like, 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 like how you call it, uh, uh, rose and shit, like the rock of and shit with the head. So he used to come around, and he used to roll up a cigar, and we made up newspaper, and I'm talking about some fat shit, like, real fat and hard. And that dude used to come around the cell, and dudes, they used to be standing in the hallway, so again, he used to be walking down like if he was a blonde, yeah, man, and walking down and just coming and whack, used to whack something, just a dude just standing there, whack, back of his head, yo, and, I, and I'm over here laughing, I'm just fucking cheerleading, I'm like, ah, I'm young, I'm young, I'm, you know, saying I don't know no better, yo, so, you know, I'm cracking up, there was one day, and this is how I got my respect from Militant. You feel me? This is how I got my respect for Militant. That was this dude. He takes my fucking nylon shirt. He takes my nylon shirt. He didn't know it was mine, but he takes it. And the motherfucker has it on, but he's in his cell. He's in his cell. So I'm looking for my shirt. I'm like, yo, where the fuck is my shirt? I just washed it. I put it over the fucking uh, window. You know, they had, they had like a little thing with the with a rack that you should put in your shirt there and let it get dry. We just put it, we just put shirts, underwear, sock, whatever, and we just let it get dry right there. Nobody, everybody should respect the shit. So when I see my shirt, I'm like, yo, somebody took my fucking shirt. So now, one of my men start looking at the dudes that, that are locked in. You feel me? He started looking at the dudes that are locked in. So now this dude comes and and one of my men sees him with the shirt on. So next thing you know, he calls me, hey yo, hey yo, June, that my name was June Bug back then. That's what they used to call me, June Bug. Hey yo, June Bug. I'm over here like, yo, what's up? Hey yo, look, this nigga got your shirt on. So I go over there. 
Oh, boom, boom, I'm walking. I see dude with my shirt on. So I tell the nigga, I'm like, yo, that's my fucking shirt. The dude said, nah, I found this shirt in the bathroom. I said, motherfucker, you didn't find that shirt in the bathroom. So I'm like, yo, can you give me my shirt, son? The nigga's like, like, yo, I found this shirt in the bathroom. I ain't, I, you know, I found this shirt in the bathroom. So next thing you know, B, I'm like, all right, okay. Now listen to this. I go down to the COs. I go down to the COs, right? I'm walking down the hill. I mean, walking down the hill. Yeah, man, walking down the hill. I'm walking down the car. The seal comes and tell, and I, and I tell the seal, yo, my my motherfucking this this is dude in the cell that has my shirt. I say, as a matter of fact, I didn't even told him like that. I told him I'm, I'm you know I'm kind of banging on somebody in the door and I, and I ain't trying to walk, waste no time opening the door and somebody just called me and ain't trying to waste that time. You feel me, guys? This is me and you guys. So next thing you know. I come up and I tell him, I say, yo, Mill, can you please crack open number, I think it was number 15, sir. I think it was 15. I said, can you please crack open 15? So hold up, man. Hold up, guys. Hold up, man. Hold up, man. Yo, listen, bro. I'm recording. I'm recording. I know you're recording. I'm recording. They're going to talk about John. I'm recording. Call me back in about half an hour. I need to talk to you now. I can't, bro. That's it, bro. That's it, bro. Respect that. Yo, so anyway, the shit's like this, bro. Oh, I'm sorry about that, people. I'm really sorry about that, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, some people just don't don't fucking listen. Anyway, so I tell Mel, yo, Mel, can you crack open 15 cell? So the nigga Mel says, for what, remember? I said, Mel, I just need, homeboy's gonna give me something and I gotta pick it up. So he said, why he doesn't give it to you in the little window? Because in the cells, you got like a little window. Right in the door, you got like a little window. So anybody can just give it to you, you can just take it. But I'm like telling you, you don't understand, Mel. There's something in there. He's in there. It's, it belongs to me. He's going to give it to me. And Milton again. But tell him to bring it through the window. So I'm saying to myself, I said, this motherfucker don't understand. So I had to tell him, bro. I said, yo, Milton, Duke has something that belongs to me. He doesn't want to give it to me. So I want you to crack the cell because I'm getting my shit. So Milton, he tells me, so why the fuck you don't just tell me, bro? I'm looking at him, I said, I'm trying to tell you in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a slick way because you got homeboy working here, another CEO that I don't know what time is with him. I don't want to blow Minuton up, you know what I'm saying? Because I heard Minuton give you one on one. Minuton will give you, yo, Minuton will give you five. He rocked that five. If you got a problem with somebody, Minuton's the CEO, they'll say, yo, five minutes. But you better not call no snow, no, no talk about I got to go to sick call. You understand what I'm saying? So, boom, he'll give me that five, but don't tell your man I gotta go to the sick call. He broke my lip, he broke my nose. You gotta, you gotta wear that until the next shift come. You feel me? So, anyway, next thing you know, Milton cracks the nigga's cell. He cracks the cell. Now, I walk, I'm walking over there to a cell, but when I'm walking, dude come out his cell. So at the same time, I'm walking, he's coming out himself, we meet up, boom. I tell dude, yo, give me my shirt. Dude said, looks at me and said, nah. He just told me straight up, nah. So when he told me the nah, that's like, okay, it's time to open up. Boom, I caught him. When I call him, he gets in position. You know, he puts up his motherfucking dick, his dick beaters. I put up my dick beaters, and we're going to go at it. So I'm, I'm like this, you know what I'm saying? I'm going in on the kid. Bah, I'm catching with jabs. Bah, bah. So Minuton is there. He's giving us that five. He's right there, though. The other CO in the bubble, making sure the, the captain don't come in, whatever the fuck. Because the, the captain, he got the key to all to all the doors to walk into every house. 
So you understand what I'm saying? So the next thing you know, do swings, you know what I'm saying? I backed up. When I backed up, I bumped into somebody. So I tripped a little bit. He caught me. Talk to him. He caught me. He gave me a nice one. A nice one. I saw a little, I saw two stars running by. <laughs> Trust me, he caught me. But when he caught me, when I stood up my stand, I called him back. Boom, boom, boom. Now I'm I'm catching this dude, B. I had this dude, this is no lie, man. I had this dude like 30 times, B. This motherfucker did not fall. This dude did not fucking fall, and I swear to God, B, I hit this man like 30 times, B, with my jab only. I hit him like 15, 16 times. With my right, I kept, boom. Yo, but at the end of the fight, man, just stopped the fight. He stopped the fight, he said, all right, all right, all right, you got him, you got him, Libero, you got him, Libero. Boom, boom, yo, take off his shirt, take off the shirt. Dude took off the shirt, when man just told him to take off the shirt, he took it off, and he gave it to me. When he gave it to me, I took it. So dude goes back and says, yo, he just he told me to yo, lock me in. Because now the dudes that L swell and these other two three cats that, that that started rocking with us, they want to get that money. They want to fuck this dude up. But now nah, we're gonna leave that alone. You understand what I'm saying? Minute, yo, that's it, that's it, man. I gave Minute my word. That day, that's when Minute came up to me the next fucking day and pulled me a fucking dime bag. He gave it to me at the end of his shift that he was getting ready to go. He was like, yo, Rivera, Minichin worked the eight, I mean the nine, the nine to, to hold on, it's the eight, or no, the seven to three, so, the seven to three, Minichin used to work the seven to three. So, right there, B, he, when, when, when we cleaned up the house, because I was part of the house gang, but I used to not clean for shit, bro, I used to not do a motherfucking thing, so. The thing was just to get a little props, just to walk around, shit, you know what I'm saying, you walking around, by the time you lock in, it's like 3.15, 3.20. You stay in your cell like for about 35 minutes. And then, you know what I'm saying, you, you come back out, your cell. You know, that's the good thing about being a house gang. And plus you certain food so you go outside. Nowadays, the house gang goes out to the hallway because the food's in the hallway now. Now they got pantries. And they, they, they started building these shits. Anyway, well, they didn't just started building. They already built them, so they're out there. Anyway, so next thing you know, I'm running the house. I'm running the house, son. That house is mine. Numero uno. You understand what I'm saying? Numero uno. Now, boom. Yo, it kept on going like that for a couple months. Benton kept hitting me off, kept hitting me off, kept hitting me off. Everything was cool. Yo, that's, that's two or three times. And this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. That sometimes... Sometimes you got to work with the police, see me? So-called police, because they grind me too, bro. This man was giving me trees, and all he wanted for me was, yo, make sure nobody gets cut when, I, when I'm working. You feel me? Make sure Rivera and this guy in Jackson and blah, 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 because my man's name was, my man L. Slug's name was Jackson. So he knew it was me and Jackson. Me and Jackson. Seems to happen in the house, me and Jackson. That was beef at the other side, meditating to get me or Jackson. One of us, you go to the next side, yo, just represent for Middleton. I'm talking about sometimes we went over there and we threw it up, yo, with another enemy for the police. Because the police was hitting us lovely, man. Everybody that was in my team, we all had headphones. I'm talking about the Sony, JBCs, while everybody had the right side of bullshit, we had the headphones. I got me a motherfucking Walkman. What a tape player, bro. What a tape player. They took it from me after like about nine months in the island. This dickhead CO took it from me, man. I was long gone already for Middleton. And one day, and all the seals that searched me, bro, never took that, that walk back away. And this fucking dirt bag, and it was a Spanish seal too. Motherfucker, a Spanish seal took my motherfucking walk, man. That Middleton gave me, bro. Equalizing the whole nine yards, son. That tape player. Some fly shit, son. But that's all right. That was all right. I got me another one, and I got me some more headphones. You know what I'm saying? Because then you talk to other CEOs. 
And you, and you and wherever you, what house you at, you just work with that CO. And if he's a scumbag, he's a fucking scumbag. So you work another CO. It could be medication. It could be a uh, mess hall CO. It could be walking in the, in the hallway CO. It could be a CO that you work with. Trust me, one is going to fall and they're going to pick your pair of headphones. But while Middleton was bringing those trees, headphones, candy, I'm a annihilator freak. I love annihilators. So he used to bring me motherfucking like two or three dollars worth of annihilators. You understand what I'm saying? Like two or three dollars worth of annihilators. Hold up. Hold up. Let me call my wife real quick. Joyce! The phone! Yeah, so anyway. Yeah, so so he used to bring me like two or three dollars of annihilators worth, man. Annihilators and lemon heads. Annihilators and lemon heads. That's what he used to bring me. Annihilators and lemon heads. So I was good. I was good. You know what I'm saying? He used to bring me that. I'm telling you, man, he even brought me, he even brought me to keep it fishing, to keep it, keep it funky. This nigga even brought me, bro, like three oxys, bro. And if you, I ain't talking about no oxy codones. I'm talking about ox, the cut, a razor. Okay? A razor. Three times he brought me three razors. Brand new. So, this year was banging with me. You understand? Me and him was riding. We was riding. Me, my team, and you already know it. The other side, because the B side was my side. The A side was over here. So, you know, the B side always was, you know, was a little louder than the, than the A side, and the B side was my house. But we used to live it up the right way. So one day, Middleton, now we acting up too much. We out of control too much now. So one day, Middleton is not working. He takes his day off, two days off a week. So what happens? This dude that was rocking in my team, this Puerto Rican dude, he fucking goes on the visit and he and he comes back up to the visit with a couple of uh, um, how do you call it? His volumes. Think upon like about about five volumes, five or six volumes, anyway. So I think he took two volumes, so the nigga started, yo, he was chilling, we was playing spades, he was watching TV in the day room. Now we playing, me, L, L's my partner, we were doing our thing, the next thing you know, this dude was like, he gets up, he picks the chair up, and he breaks the TV, because we was making noise. He breaks the fucking TV. Now, this dude is on a suicide mission. You don't break, you don't touch the TV, and you don't touch the phone. Are you fucking crazy? That's your life, bro. So when I saw this dude breaking the TV, I just looked at this nigga and I said, motherfucker, when that nigga, yo, when he broke the TV, that he went like this, he just threw the chair down and kept on walking. So when, when, we, when we turned around and we looking at the shit, the same time I'm seeing him walking away, and the same time I'm looking at Jimmy, and I don't believe it. I don't believe that he did something like that. So when I finally snap out of it, the first thing I look is a fucking mop. That's you know the mop fingers. I grab one. When I grabbed it, yo, the nigga was about to go into his cell. I threw that shit at the nigga, whoa! And the shit is heavy, B. And I always say to God, thank you, God. Thank you for not letting me hit that man with that mop finger. I would have killed that man. And yo, sometimes I think about it, I say, thank you, God. That man would have been dead. Yo, when that mop finger, when I let go of that mop finger, that mop finger went like this, baby. All you saw was his head. And the mob go boom, and the cell locking, bang. The CO packs me up. He throws me in the wall. He says, "Yo, I'ma write you up, and you out this house." I'm like, "Yo, whatever, man." The nigga broke the TV. What the fuck? Why are you flipping on me for? You know, I want to fuck this nigga up for breaking the TV. The CO say, yeah, but you don't do that. You don't throw no mop rangers, man. You could have killed them. I said, I'm your eyelid kill him, so fuck all that. Next thing you know, B, nigga calling up. 
They don't got no room nowhere for me. No room. They only got one room, one cell open. And that was right next to me. All the cells was kind of full. For population, wherever the fuck, all the cells was kind of full. So they sent me next door because they had another room. I'm right there. Now I'm in the fucking A side. Dudes in the A side, like, oh man. Now this nigga June Bug is here. Now he's gonna try to take over this eye, ho ha, he he he. But now nah, I went and I told these guys, yo, listen, I ain't trying to stay here for long. When Militant come back, I go back to Militant. So he that was like, you know, uh, you know, okay. The next day comes. That's the CEO that we know. We go and we talk to that CEO. Yo, CEO, man, listen, man, blah, the lead, the CEO that made this move. He was he's gonna he's coming back tonight and he's gonna move us, he's gonna move, he's gonna do the move. So the CEO's like, all right, so let him do the move when he come back in the afternoon. I'm like, yeah, but CEO, come on, man, you're here already. So why don't you, man? Just 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 put me on the side, man. Come on, ain't no big deal. My cell's still open. So he was like thinking about it, thinking about it. It took him like two hours, but he finally, we finally broke him. That motherfucker put me on the side. Now the dude that I swing the mop stick the mop ringer to. He like, yo, man, I'm sorry, man. It was the volumes, yo. I'm like, yo, don't worry about that. I don't want to kill this motherfucker, but I, I calmed down a little bit. This motherfucker CEO wrote me up. You feel me? The CEO wrote me up. So I ain't gonna hit the fire, so I'm gonna have to use this motherfucker as a witness and say, no, it's just lying. He ain't just throwing me nothing at me. You know what I'm saying? We gotta go to that big hearing. I use the same dude in my hair. Yo, listen, I threw anything at you. No, he ain't throw nothing at me. That seal was bugging out. I didn't go to the box. Thank you. But back to the story. Anyway, that day we made a hoo ha ha. The next day comes. The next day. Minutes is supposed to be coming in. Minutes don't come in. He takes three days off, yo. What happens? There's a dude in the house that he's bugging out. We don't think that dude was ready for population. Think he was a little cuckoo bird. You feeling me? He was a little something was going on with this man. So they bring the psychiatrist to talk to him to see if he's alright, to see if he needs to go to a to a Elmo house and stuff like that. They check him out. What happens? The the dude. The psychiatrist that goes there, he walks around with a book. This book got everybody information, who's what, what's what. I come and I grab the book. I take the book. I don't know why. I just wanted to just fuck with this dude. And I throw in the slop sink. The slop sink is when you when you when you when you mop at, when you mop and you clean the shit up, that's the slop sink. I throw it in the slop sink. The dude, after like 10 minutes, he realized that he left the book. He goes back to the day where the book ain't there, bro. The motherfucker starts panicking. The CEO walks in. Yo, where's the book guy? The book better show up. Everybody like, what are you talking about? The book better show up. I'm not playing. Yo, CEO, what are you talking about? Next thing you know, check it. Next thing you know. Somebody goes to the slot sink. They find the book. Yo, look at the book right here. Bam. The CEO comes and he calls me and he calls L. Blah, blah, blah. Get over here right now. Well, we go over there like, yo, what's up? Yo, I know your motherfucker took it. I know you you and him took it. This office has been warning me about your two. Listen, I'm writing this down for Minuton. I'm like, Minuton ain't gonna, whatever, right? Whatever. Minuton ain't gonna do nothing. That's my word. I'm thinking like, yo, Minuton ain't gonna do shit. Me and that man got an understanding here. Guess what? He wakes me up the next day, cracks my cell. Boom. I walk out. Yo, I peek. He said, you and Jackson over here right now. Boom, I go over there. Motherfucker say, yo, your motherfuckers did this, 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 and that. Your two are out of this house. I looked at him, I said, you serious, Minuton? You serious? 
They're like, y'all motherfuckers out. You know you niggas supposed to be doing that. You know we better. You know, I'm like, yo, Mill, we didn't disrespect you. And that was not us of the books. With the book. The seal was bugging out yesterday. That was not us. Oh, you know, I don't give a fuck, but you niggas been together too long. So the both of you out of here. Yo, I feel like this nigga used me, yo. I feel like this motherfucker used me for three and a half, four, four months, B. So I'm like, motherfucker, I go to my cell, I start packing up my shit. L was like, yo, you think that nigga packed us up? I said, yo, L, I don't give a fuck, that nigga packed us up. I was like, damn, I'm not gonna pack up. I said, yo, pack this shit up. This nigga, this nigga got us out of here, B. L, L didn't believe it. Up to the CO saying, Jackson, what you doing? You supposed to be packing your shit up. That's when he goes to his cell. I was like, yo, this nigga ain't playing, man. We out of here. And I said, I told you, nigga, I'm already getting packed up. I got two big big bags with the you know, we used to use the fucking blanket. We used to use a blanket for that. We have we always had you got the pack up blanket. That's the pack up blanket that I used to always carry. I used to pack up my shit there and use that. Yo, you, I mean, the shit, yo, it's crazy how you pack up in bikers. It's crazy. You, you, you pull that fucking blanket through the hallway. It's crazy, yo. Anyway, we got that popping, right? Check this out. I'm getting dressed. Everything is good. I'm waiting for the fucking bus. What we call the bus is the escort because when you get packed up, to go to another house, the CEO got to escort you. You feel me? To the house. And they got to pick the floor card. The floor card is the, the card that got all your information and all that good shit. You know, when you go to court, when you don't go to court, and everything. So, anyway, I go over there, right? And Minuton, you know, we're chilling. So, I see Minuton talking to this big tall dude. Big tall dude. Like, this dude, like, about 6'6. Six, six. But kind of slimy though. So I look right and I say, Yo, Minuton. The dude who I mentioned looks and I say, Yo, what time is your old girl was coming over here? I don't want to get caught up for the count. This is the 11 o'clock count. I don't want to get caught up. Minuton comes and tells me, Yo, don't worry about it. When he gets here, he gets here. So I see the dude laughing. And I look at the dude and say, Yo, Papa, you think that's funny, Mel? What he said? So, dude looks at me, man, he comes out of nowhere and gas his shit up again, baby. He comes and say, hey, yo, remember, this is my boy from New York. He ain't the one. Let me tell you, you good, Rivera, but I think my man is better. Now, he's like calling me out on a fight, me, and his man is like, let me say, yo, stop playing, Middleton, or whatever his real name, because there was boys. Middleton and the inmate was boys, but you know what happens. One goes good and one goes sour. You feel me? Middleton became the CO and this dude became the hoodlum. So, but there was friends from the streets. So, this dude was like gassed up and shit. So, Middleton's like, damn, this is shame, man. I can't see you go at it for your last time. And, and I come up, and I'm like, yo, you think you're going to gas me up? I'm not the one to get gas, Middleton. So, so his, the dude comes and tells me, his man comes and says, oh, so you talking about I'm getting gassed up? So I said, yeah, that nigga got you gassed up as a motherfucking, like a hoopty. So the nigga was like, oh, yeah? So both so the nigga, like, yeah, he's like, yo, I would love a one-on-one -on -one with this dude. So when he said I would love a one-on-one -on -one with this dude, guess what? My man, Boo. L, uh, what was that, that Spanish kid's name? Fuck, I, uh, I forgot. Anyway, everybody that was down on my team was there. So I can open the cell. So the cell is like, you see this gate right there? You see that gate right there? It opens up. Bing! Like going to your left. Now you walk in, you pass the cell, when you pass the cell, it locks, boom. Right there, you got the bubble, the bubble is where the CO be at, the two CO. So you got two entrances. You got one to your left and one to your right. So the one to your left is the, is the other side. So I go to the B side, I walk to the B side, you know, door. Cause you know, you got a door that you can lock that door and you can't see 
the guys from B side. Now the door's open, you can see the inmates from B side. And the inmates from B side can see your side, the A side. You feel me? So I'm the B side. So I'm looking at the dudes from the from the A side. So the dude from the A side is talking all that shit with his boy, that is the boy is the CEO. So when I get there and I pop out, so I'm coming in, B. So when I come in, Middleton looks at me, he says, oh shit, he's ready. So his man says, okay, let's go. So by his man picks up his punches, B, I already went in, boom, call him. Boom, call him, yo, son. I'm, I'm going to be honest to you, man. Not for nothing, though. Everybody takes an L. And if I would take an L, I would say I took an L. But son, this was my easiest fight. In that year, in that time, from all the people that I fought in jail, this dude was the easiest. I'm talking about the easiest and the fastest fight I ever had. I thought this was going to be a nice cop. This dude was 6'6", six, six, tall. Yeah, he was a little slimmy, but if the dude would have known what he was doing, he would have been jabbing me, you know what I'm backing up. Son, not one punch he threw that caught me. I just know I hit him like three times. He, he started, you know, like, like like backing up, like falling. And I went up to him and I started catching him again. Boom, 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 boom. Then I took him inside the, 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 the bubble. He went inside the bubble and fell down, down, down to the chair. Like he almost sat on the chair, but the chair moved back. It was one of those wheelchairs with, with the wheels. And then when he went like this, like, like, like he was falling down to the chair, like he was, he was sat down. But the chair, like, he sat down to the corner and the chair gave up, boom. And he, he fell, like, to his ass, boom, went like this. That's when Minnetton got in the way. He got in me. He said, yo, Rebecca, you got it. You got it, Rebecca. You number one. You was number one in this house. Yo, you got it, Rebecca. You got it. So I looked at his man, and I told his man like this. I said, yo, don't ever let the police gas you up, man. That's what he was doing to me. But, like, if you're going to do that, make sure he gives you something for it. And I looked at Minuton, I said, right, Minuton? Minuton was quiet. He's like, you got it, brother. You got it. Son, let me tell you. I fucked up in that house, no question about that. I had trees. I had, Minuton was hitting me off with the things out from the streets, man. He was bringing me sometimes McDonald's, Chinese restaurant, food. I mean, son. He was blessing us. He was blessing us. I'm not going to lie. But I felt that he still used me because when that nigga had problems on the other side or a dude used to come into my side and not go with his program or, or disrespect him, I had to go to a dude and I was like, yo, this police is good money, man. Chill. Chill, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you to chill because, you know, if this man gets abrogated, I mean, if this man starts getting angry, shit, he's going to be shutting shit down, and I ain't going to be able to make my money. See, my money was, I was making money on the other side because I was selling them trees also. I was selling a joint for motherfucking two packs of cookies or two packs of cigarettes, you know what I'm saying? No, no, bullshit, bullshit. Uh, a pack of cigarettes for a joint and two packs of cookies for a joint. That's how I was doing it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, people was buying my shit, so I was getting, you know, I had food, man. I had food, soap, deodorant, sandals, stamps, envelopes. I mean, deodorant. I mean, everything that, that, that you're supposed to have, I had it. And I had a lot. You understand what I'm saying? I had a lot. Also from New York, my ex choice used to bring me stuff. Yo, let me tell you, when I went upstate, when I went up state, this is no lie, B. I had over fifty something bottles of shampoo. I had three hundred and something bars of soap. I had over twenty something deodorants, baby powder, all that stuff. I was saving to go stay for niggas. Was like, yeah, they let you take all the all all, all, the, all the cosmetics you got. They let you take it. The cigarettes, they let you take it. At that time, upstate, you should accept the cigarettes. And if you had cigarettes, there was no problem. They'd be like, okay, bring your cigarettes. You understand what I'm saying? But they also stopped that. But the first time I went to state, I was good. You know why? I had over nine packs of cigarettes. Plus, that day, I got hit off with trees. For my shorty, ex-wifey, 
the next day, when I'm waiting, I'm like this, like, yo, I was waiting, there's no lie, man. I was waiting for 13 and a half months to go up state. On the one and a half to three. 13 months. 13 months. So the first time I went to stay, all I did was two months, bro. I swear to God, I did two and a half months, maybe three months. That's what I did. I did all my time in the island back then. Back then, they were fucking with the inmates that was that they had like one to three, one and a half to three, two to four. They wanted you to finish most of the time in, in the fucking Rikers. Then when you go and stay, all you got to do is like two, three months to save money. You feel I me? Mean? But now, they had me 13 and a half months. And when I got up there, yo... The parole board just finished coming, they, and, and they couldn't see me because it was right there. So they had to, I had to wait like the following month. The following month came. I was in the house in the jail that I was supposed to be. That was Orleans Correctional Facility. That's when I became the lion. You know what I'm saying? I became a lion. So, boom, and everything was good, beautiful, and like I said, I was only there for like three months maybe, and I came home. Came home on a five-year, uh, let me see, no, I had two and a half years parole, or three years, I think it was three years parole. And I did it. I did the three years, but let me tell you, in Rikers Island, Rikers Island at one time was cool, man. I'm talking about if you had to do a bid, you wouldn't do it in Rikers Island because people get used to that one-hour visit. That's a one hour visit. That's a crime. You understand what I'm saying? But upstate, you got eight hours, bro. Eight hour visit. You know what I'm saying? Ocho horas. And 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 let me tell you, when I was in some. Well, I don't know about some jails, but in Arctic Hill, you can take cigarette breaks, bro. You go outside and you can smoke a cigarette. It gotta be a closed pack. But you can take a cigarette, open it up, and puff, and do your thing, son. With your visitor. Oh man, I remember those days. Let me tell you something. All these stories that I be telling you about Rikers Island, the fights, the visits, the commissary, uh, uh, the clothes that people wear. When you upstate, when you in Rikers, you know, you want to look, let me tell you, in Rikers Island, when I used to get my visits, I used to take a shower, right? Finish the shower, go to the dorm, put on all this money, good stuff on, the deodorant, the, 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 the Muslim oil, the baby powder, and all that crazy stuff. Slick back the hair and everything. That's when I had when I had full grown hair at one time, you know. And then you should go down to that visit. And yo, when you used to walk into that visit, that you see everybody sitting down, and you look at your girl, man, that you love with all your heart and soul. And when you look at her, man, oh man, that beautiful relax, man. That you look at your shorty there and she's there with you waiting for on your visit and you sit down and you hug her. You remember that shit, guys? Do you guys remember that, man? Those that have that been locked up. Do you remember that moment when you was with that girl or you still with that girl when she used to come see you upstate? How beautiful it was. How beautiful to bring your family. To have a trailer visit. I believe in Collins and Fishkill, they took it down. The, the only two mediums that had it left. I was there in Collins and I was married, but I couldn't get a visit because wifey at that time was also doing the bid because me and her got caught. We got caught with mad shit. I told you guys the story. But, you know, what can I say? But that would have been beautiful, man, going on a visit in upstate New York, what they used to call the trailer. It was three, what is it, three nights, 
three nights and two days, something like that, with your shorty man. You meet up with her, she's in the trailer, you walk into the trailer, she's in there, you lock that door, you start making out, you see your wife, you start hugging and kissing her, bro, and, and wow, <laughs> you already know. You already know, kid. And then you sit down and you look at the TV, Man, that was cool, man. I, I'm pretty sure that would have been beautiful, but I never had that. And I was married. That's one of my things that, that, that I was hating, man. And that was my last bit. I was married, and I was in a fucking jail that had trailer visits. And I couldn't get one because my wife was also locked up. And she came out first to me. She did. She came out first to me, yo. I did like two and a half years more than her. You understand what I'm saying? And she could have, but I, I, I refused. I refused. I said, nah, I couldn't do this. I couldn't. I couldn't have no more. I couldn't have the trailer visit because I, I, it, didn't, it didn't felt right. It did not felt right for me. And I just tell her, you know something? Let's, just come see me. Come see me like once every four or five months. I'm not gonna make you go through that, sweetheart. I love you, you know you, and I know you love me. You know how many children are out here right now that in jail, we call them trailer babies, that was made in the trailer? I know like, like four guys. From Collins only, for one jail, Collins, four guys that I know that they wife got pregnant while they was in the trailer. You feel me? She's like, yo, he's like, yo, I got a baby. The last time I saw her was two months ago. She's pregnant, she got two months. Bing, beautiful thing, you know what I'm saying? And then it keeps going, oh man, let me tell you, I seen that shit four times, man. And, and everybody to look at me. They, people used to feel sorry for me because I had a wife. I was legally married. But I couldn't get a trailer visit because she was locked up. And then when she did came home, right, listen to this shit. When she came home, like I said, I had two and a half years to go. She wanted to. And I kept saying, no, no, not in here, not in here, not in here. I know that probably messed her up a little bit. But that's the way shit goes, man. Anyway, guys, listen. Now, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming with, with, with that story that I just said. And I hope you guys like it and enjoy it. And this is your boy, K Solo. I just finished telling you guys a story, and I'm, and I'm like, just like always, I have fun with you guys. And I hope you guys enjoy my story, like I said, like not that more than 10 seconds ago. <laughs> you know? I want to thank my boy. I want to thank my boy, Shady. Shady, I want to thank my boy Shady. You heard Shady? Keep doing this, Shady. Keep doing it. It's lovely. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Thank you. Um, like I said, it's 100, Shady. It's 100 all day, every day. You got the approval from the K Solo show. Seriously. All right, guys. Hold on. Let me put this mic. To, let me put this mic on the way on the side uh, because I want to do something right now with the computer. And hold up, let me raise this up a little bit. Let me raise it up a little bit, guys. Uh, testing, yeah, okay. Hold up, guys, I gotta do something here. Very important, because right now, I just learned how to do this, you feel me? So I gotta go in, and now I gotta turn this off. This is a whole big thing now. I gotta do a thousand things right now, guys, seriously. All right, so this is your boy, K Solo, talking about, let me see if I can find a little mousey. Hold on, I'm gonna have to put on my glasses. Hold up, guys. Hold up. Okay, the mousey's right here. All right, guys, I got the mouse, and it's all 
good, you heard? This is your boy, K Solo, and this is Rikers Island Stories. Thank you. Hopefully, you already know telephone number will be there. Call me. Uh, you guys got my telephone numbers, but please don't call me at 5 o'clock in the morning. Please don't call me at 4 o'clock in the morning and tell me what time you, I'm coming on live. I swear to God, some people be calling me at 5, 6 in the morning talking about, yo, Solo, are you live? Come on, guys. <laughs> come on. I love you guys, but come on, guys. All right, live at 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, guys. You're crazy. But uh, I really appreciate that, and thank you for the love, man. Your boy, K-Solo. You guys already know. Holla.